Hi, hi to everybody. In this lecture video, we're going to be dealing with chapter 8. Chapter 8 is about a central force uh, motion. Now, after doing this chapter, you will understand the concept of reduced mass, and you will know the conservation theorems first integral of uh, the motion, and you will know how to explain three Kepler's law, and you will also understand the orbits in central field, and you will also understand the orbital dynamics. And of course, you will be expected to be able to solve the problems on the above concept. Now, the motion of the system consisting of two bodies affected by the force directed along a line connecting the centers or central force is extremely important physical problem. That physical problem is actually important in two quite different realms of physics, which is number one is, uh, for an example, the motion of celestial bodies, planets, moons, comets, and double stars, and certain two-body nuclear interaction, such as scattering of alpha particle by atomic uh, nuclear. Now, the concept of uh, reduced mass. Now, uh, consider uh, we have two methods to describe the position of, of two, two particles. For an example, in number A, uh, from the arbitrary coordinates um, origin, for an example, from the arbitrary uh, coordinates origin, where this center of mass vector R is just that vector from this point to to the center of mass and number two for the center of mass uh, from the center of mass where the center of mass vector is just equals to is just equal to zero now in that case we will just be restricting ourselves for the case where potential energy is a function only of the of the magnitude of the of the position vector or oh. And then from there, we can therefore be able to write the Lagrangian. I just want to remind you the Lagrangian is nothing else but is the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Now, in this case, the potential energy is just a function of, of R. Now, that's, that's what you are, you are going to have. Now, if you plug everything into the Lagrangian, you are just going to have the kinetic energy for the first particle and then the kinetic energy of the second particle. Therefore, that must be minus the potential as a function of, of the position. Right, we may choose the origin for the coordinates to be a particle or centers of mass uh, that is when R, where the center of mass uh, vector is e e equal to zero. Therefore, we are just going to have this, this equation here. Now, we can also define the vector r. The vector r, if we define the vector r as r, or the vector r1 minus vector r2, this will just give us this, these two equations. Right, now, let me just uh, do it for you. Now, you have the equation m1, r, r vector 1 plus m2, r vector 2 is equal to 0. And then we have defined. We have defined that vector, the vector r, to be r1 minus r, r2. Now, in this case, when I want the r1, I can just substitute r2. Therefore, r, r vector 2 is nothing else but it's just going to be r1 minus vector r. Now, in this equation here, I'm just going to substitute the m1, r1, plus m2, whenever I see r2, I'm just going to have this. That is just going to be r1 minus r is just equal to 0. Therefore, this is just going to be m1 r, r1 plus m2 r, r1 minus m2 r. Therefore, that must be equal to 0. Now, if you take the common factor there, you can see that r1 is nothing else but it's just going to be m2 r divided by m1 plus m m2 now in that case i want to define this this is nothing else but that is the uh, what you call the reduced mass that is what you call the reduced mass uh, that is the reduced mass which is nothing else but denoted by the by the mu sign right so that's that's what you are going to have now you can do the same for 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 R2, but here you will just have to make the R1 a subject of the formula. So that's that's the equation that you are actually seeing seeing there. That's the equation that you are you are seeing seeing down there. Right. Now, if we substitute everything back to the Lagrangian equation, this is what we are going to have as our Lagrangian because R this vector R consists of R1 and R2. 
from the definition date. So that's that's what you are going to have as your Lagrangian. Now, where mu naught is nothing else, where mu naught is nothing else, but is the what you call the the reduced mass and is defined in terms of m1 in terms of this equation 8 8.5 now let us also do the conservation theorem a uh, first integral of uh, of the motion the system we wish to discuss uh, consists of the particles of uh, of 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 the reduced mass moving in a central field described by the potential uh, function which is the function of the position the system rotation about the fixed axis through the center of uh, force cannot be affected uh, cannot affect the equation of motion right under such conditions the angular momentum of the system is just given by l is equal to r cross p now r cross p r cross p in this case the angular momentum would be up but if the particle was moving on the opposite direction the angular momentum was just going to be pointing down right r cross l r cross l would just be up but if the particle is moving on the other side therefore the angular momentum would be if the particle is moving a clockwise, therefore the angular momentum will just be pointing downwards. The angular momentum will just be pointing downwards. Now, therefore, we have only a two-dimensional problem, and the Lagrangian may be therefore be a convenient to express it in terms of the polar polar coordinates. In terms of the polar coordinates, and now the velocity in polar coordinates is just given by that. So now, in terms of uh, plucking back the 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 the, the velocities on the on the Lagrangian uh, equations for the polar coordinates, this is what you are going to have. This is what you are going to have. Where this term in brackets is nothing else but is the velocity in polar in polar coordinates. Right now, because the Lagrangian is the cyclic in theta, the angular momentum conjugate to the the coordinates theta is uh, conserved. For an example, the rate of uh, uh, change in, in 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 momentum in theta. Is just equal to zero. Why? Because 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 the Lagrangian is not a function of theta, but is a function of theta dot. Right now, but the momentum in theta, momentum in theta, momentum in theta is nothing else but is just given by the differentiation of L, partial differentiation of L with respect to theta dot. Now, if you do that. This is what you are going to have. For an example, what I'm trying to say here is you you if you want to take dl over d d theta dot, this is what you are going to have. This term is just going uh, the, the first term is constant, but the second term is just going to give, give us two mu, and then you differentiate that uh, with respect to theta dot, you are just going to have r r squared times two theta theta dot. Now, in that case, this two will cancel, will cancel with each other, and then we are just going to have r squared theta theta dot. So that's that's the the equation that you are going to have. But that that must be equals to equals to a constant. That must be equals to a constant. Now, this since a symmetry has uh, therefore permitted us to integrate to integrate to integrate immediately one of the equations of motion, the quantity p. P, the, the the momentum in theta is the first integral of the of the motion that is the first integral of 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 the of the motion why that is the case that is the case because now you are just going to have for an example this you are just going to have p that p theta is nothing else but it's just the mu r squared theta dot but what is theta dot Theta dot is nothing else but the theta dot is is mu r squared and theta dot is is um, d theta dt. Now, from there you can be able to do the the integration because now if you want to do the integration that would be p theta dt is nothing else but it's just mu r squared the integral d theta that's that's what the equation is is, is actually telling us right now in that case uh, uh, the quantity is is just the first integral of the of the motion now we denote we denote we denote its constant value by by l by by a symbol l by the symbol l 
and note that L can be a negative as well as a positive. That L is a constant, has a simple a geometric interpretation. Now, we see that in describing the path, R, R as a function of theta, the radius vector swaps out an area half R squared d theta. And therefore, the time at the time interval d theta. Now, the area here, the area there is nothing else but is half base times height, which is nothing else but just going to give us this this equation here. Right, in that case, on dividing by the time interval, the aerial velocity, the aerial velocity is just given by, by this equation here because we just uh, take the time derivative of this. This is what we are going to have. But what is uh, uh, d theta, uh, d theta, d theta divided by dt is nothing else but is theta dot. So in that case, that must just be equals to this, this equation taking into account the definition of, of the previous equation. The previous uh, equation where we have, we have, uh, uh, the previous equation where we have, um, where we have uh, defined the L. I mean, if you substitute the uh, way we have defined the L, this is what you are going to have. If you have, it's just equal to so constant. Right. Now, those the real velocity is constant in time, uh, this results was obtained empirically by Kepler for a planetary motion and it's known as the Kepler's second law. The conservation of total energy is uh, automatically ensured because we have uh, limited the discussion to non-dissipative system. Those, the total energy is nothing else but is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy which is nothing else but is just equal to E which must just be, be, be a constant. Right, and therefore the energy is therefore given by, by this equation here because we know what is T, we know what is T from the polar, uh, from the polar uh, coordinates is just given by that uh, and then we know what is U, uh, the potential is a function of R. Therefore, or we can just write this in terms of uh, when we go back by the, the way we have defined L, the way we have defined L, this equation can be written in terms of, of, of that, that equation 8.114. Right. Now, in terms of the equation of motion, uh, solving equation 8, 1.4, because equation 1.84 is just given by this. This is what we have. Now, from there, we can just see that we have r dot square. So we want to make, we, we want to move from r dot square to, to just r. So this is what we, we want to do in our next, 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 next slide. So when you do that, you can just see that the r dot is nothing else but it's just given by dr dt and it's nothing else but it's just given by, by this equation from equation 8.14. The square root coming from the fact that we are removing the square of, of r dot square. All right, good. Now, at present, however, we are interested in the equation of the path in terms of r and theta in terms of r and theta because we are in polar coordinates now we can write we can write dt d theta in terms of this equation so d d d th d theta we can write d theta d theta is nothing else but d theta is just d theta but i can multiply by one i can multiply by one when i multiply by one i'm just going to multiply by dt divided by dt I've done nothing and then I can also multiply by another one dr over d, dr. Now in that case I can therefore rearrange this in terms of d theta dt and then dt dt dr and therefore dt dr and then I will just have dr dr here. So that's that's what you are seeing there. But what is this? What is this? This is nothing else but it's theta, it's theta dot. And this one here is nothing else but is r dot. Why that is r dot? Because dr d theta is nothing else but it's r dot. Now if it's an inverse, therefore if it is dt dr, that must be one over r, r dot. So that's why you see this r dot there. 
and then therefore you just have the that dr there good so that's 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 uh, uh, that's a very important uh, technique to be to be used now we can substitute uh, what we know uh, from uh, that equation 8.10 which is this into that equation if you do that this is what we are going to have in terms of of theta the theta is just going to be given by by this equation right now that integration can can actually be be solved now the actual solution uh, can be obtained only for a certain specific forms of the force law where the force is the proportional to r to the power to the power uh, to the power n we can also attack the problem using the lagrangian equation for the uh, coordinates r now if we use the lagrangian equation Lagrangian equation of motion. Now, from there, we know uh, that L is just given by this. Now, if we take the D, DR, DR, DL, DR, DL, DR, DL, if we take this, DR, DL, DR, DL is just going to be R, it's just going to be R theta dot squared. Now, if you plug, if you take this and then you take that and then you plug, things back this is what you are you are going to have because now you remember in the potential term uh, you have you 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 as a, a function of r now if you take dr so this is what you are going to have now but we know what is the the definition of 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 the force the force the force is nothing else but it can be defined in terms of 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 the negative uh, gradient of 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 the potential so that is the force now we we just substitute that with 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 that equation there now from there equation 8.18 can be cast in the uh, for a uh, form most suitable for certain types of uh, calculation by making a simple uh, change of 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 variable for an example in that case this is what you are going to have if you have if you choose uh if you define u to be 1 over r, now I'm saying du d theta is nothing else but it is du d theta dr dr. I'm just multiplying by 1. I've done nothing. I've done, I've done nothing wrong there. Now, in that case, I can just write this thing as d, du over dr and then dr over d theta. Now, in that case, du, dr, du, dr, I know what is u, but I differentiate u respect to r. Now, in that case, if you differentiate this, you are just going to have r minus 1. You are going to have u is equal to r minus 1 and then you differentiate that with respect to r now if you do that this is what you are going to have 1 over r square as your dr as this term this is what you are going to have but that must be multiplied by dr over d theta so that's that's what you are actually seeing here so this is what you are seeing there right so that's that's what you are going to have now, if you have this, I can also multiply by 1 by dt over dt. Now, if you do that, this is what you are going to have. That's the equation that you are going to have, as, as I've already explained previously. Good. Now, but from equation 8.10, we know the definition of uh, theta dot. Now, so du d theta is nothing else but just given by, by that equation here. Right. Now, next, we, we want to write the d squared the, the the second order uh, differential equation of u with respect to d theta squared now if you do that this is what you are going to have because we know uh, what is the d d u d theta d u d theta is just given by by this equation here right now we have to differentiate that uh, with respect to theta but uh, before i do that i can multiply by one if you multiply by dt over dt this is what you are going to have now you will finally have this this equation where you, uh, the reduced mass and the angular uh, momentum are just constant therefore this d, d over dt will just go for for r which is nothing else but the r double dot 
Good. Now, and with the same substitution for theta, we are just going to have this. If you want to substitute theta from that equation there, we want to substitute theta dot from that equation. This is what you are going to have. Du, the second order differential of u with respect to theta is just given by, by this equation. Right, therefore, solving for, for r, r, r double dot and r theta, in terms of u, we find this equation. We, we will therefore find 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 this this equation if we we solve that with respect to that. Remember our earlier uh, definition where we define we define u in terms of one over over r. So don't forget that we are just going to to be using that in order to to have this these equations here. All right. Now substituting this equation into 8.18, the previous equation 8.18, therefore the transform equation of motion is just given by this equation 8.220. Now which we may also write, we may also write this equation in terms of, of this because as I've said, as I've said that we have defined u, we have defined u in terms of 1 over r. Now, if you still, if you take things back, so this is what you are going to have. Now, this form of the equation of motion is particularly useful if we wish to find the first law that uh, gives a particular known orbit. Particular known of orbit where the r is just a function of, of, of theta. Right. Now, to make things uh, make sense to you, let us just do the following example, 8.1. Find the first law for a central force field that allows a particle to move in logarithmic spiral orbit given by R is given by this. As you can see, R is a function of theta. R is a function of theta. R is a function of theta. From that equation, I think you are able to see that R is a function of, of of theta because there's theta here where k and alpha are, are constant now in order for us to solve that we are just going to use the equation that we have just derived and what we want there is nothing else but we want to get the 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 the, the first as a function of r now in that case we just uh, we first use this uh, we first uh, find the this uh, this term there this term is nothing else but it's just going to be given by that because this is r and we know what is r we know what is r we're given r we're given r we're given r now in that case if you substitute the r and then k is just a constant we leave it there but now if you take this to the to be a numerator the sign there will change to be minus and then at the end of the day, this is what you are going to have because you differentiate this with respect to theta. That's why you are just going to have minus alpha, alpha r. We are just going to have alpha r. But now if you take the square, if you differentiate that again, this is what you are going to have. Alpha square divided by, by, by r. Now from equation uh, 8.21, we can just substitute things back because we know what is this now. Now if you substitute things back, this is what we are going to have as 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 the force the force is just nothing else but the force as a function of r is just given by 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 this equation here because we know what is this this is the, this uh, this part there and this part there one over r is nothing else but it's it's here so this is what you are going to have in terms of 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 the force now as you can see that the first law is attractive inverse in, in inverse cube inverse 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 cube right now let us also do the example 8.2 determine the r as a function of t and theta is a function of of t for the problem in example 8.1 now in that case for equation this one that we have defined we find theta we find theta to be equal to this now, in that case, because we know what is r, r square, we can just uh, substitute the, the r square because we are given r. We are given r from the e, e, example 8.1. So now if we substitute r, the, we are just going to have an r square. This is what we are going to have. But now, in that case, rearranging this equation will just give us uh, the following. I just want to remind you that uh, theta dot, 
is nothing else but it's it's d is d theta dt now if you substitute that wherever way you see d uh, theta dot uh, with that then you shall agree with me that uh, that and you rearrange you are just going to have this equation here this is the equation that you are going to have now from that equation there you can use the integration there now if you use the integration there in this case from zero to t or, or if you use the integration then you will have t there you will have t there plus c prime where c prime is nothing else but is the constant of 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 uh, of the integration and then you differentiate with respect to theta there therefore you will just go have this two alpha as your denominator right in that case multiplying by two alpha and letting c is equal to two c gives you this equation therefore this is the equation that you are going to have after doing that now if you solve for theta as a function of t by taking the natural uh, logarithm because here you have this equation here now if you have this equation here you want to take the the, the the logarithm if you take the logarithm everything here will just come down there now this uh, theta as a function of t is just going to be given by this equation where c is nothing else but it's just the constant of of uh, uh, the integration constant now similarly the r as a function of t by eliminating equation 8.23 and 8.24 from here we can just see that this is just going to be given by this now the r theta is just going to be given by by this equation and of course note the the square root all right the integration constant c and angular momentum l needs for are uh, determined from the initial initial conditions now let us also do the example 8.3 what is the total energy of the orbit of the previous two two example now the total energy we know what is the total energy the total energy is just given by this now we really need to find what is r r dot so that we can put r dot there and then we square it and we must also know what is the 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 potential energy is a function of r now in order for us to find the potential i just want to remind you that the force the force as a function of r is nothing else but this du over dr now in that case if you want du du is nothing else but is just given by by the integral f as a function of r and then d dr so that's that's what you are going to have there now if you 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 integrate from zero to the maximum or you integrate from zero to r so that's 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 basically what you are going to have now in that case we know what is the uh what is the force the force uh, from the previous uh, uh example the force is just given by that now we are just going to be integrating with respect to 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 r now if you integrate with respect to r because the force was uh, uh, the, the, the 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 proportional to the inverse of the of the cube of of r now if you do that this is what you are going to have but we have let you the potential at infinity to be equal to zero now if you do that and then we substitute l to be this as was defined in equation 8.10 and then we can be able to determine what is r dot now in this case we want to write the d theta dc in terms of this this is just the same the same thing i multiply by one but now in here i just differentiate i just differentiate um uh, uh, i i just have to to write this in terms of that this is so this is what you are going uh, this is what you are going to have now the r dot the r dot is nothing else but it's just given by by this equation here the r dot is just given by by this this equation here why why that is the case because the r dot remember the r dot the r dot is nothing else but is dr over d dt but now i can multiply this by by one d theta over d theta now in that case what i'm going to have i'm going to have dr d theta and then d d d theta dt now this 
term that you are seeing there is nothing else but is this term here d theta with respect to t d theta with respect to t is nothing else but you are just going to have that that uh, equation you are uh, you are seeing here right 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 so when you substitute now the total energy is nothing else but it's just given by by this this equation now the total energy of the orbit is zero if the total energy of the system is zero if r goes to infinity uh, for an example if r goes to infinity uh, because we in all terms in all terms for an example the, uh, the first term in the first term we have uh, e is proportional to one over r and then the second term is also proportional to r squared and the third term is also proportional to r square is also proportional to to r square so what does this say is when you have one divided by a very big number that is nothing else but it's just zero it becomes worse when you have to divide with a square of a very big number Therefore, this is just going to be equivalent to zero. So this is what the the, 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 the total energy of the orbit is zero if, if you at R is equal to infinity. Therefore, we are just going to have to have the total energy to be zero. Very far, very far. Now, let us also talk about the orbits in the central field. Now, the radi uh, radical velocity of the particle moving in a central field is given by 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 this equation. Remember, we have uh, to solve for 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 r dot from r r dot square. This is what we are going. Uh, this is what we had uh, from eight point one one five. Now, this equation indicates that r dot vanishes at the roots of a radial that is at point four, which which this term inside here, which this term is just equal to zero. Now, the vanishing of r dot implies that the vanishing of the r dot, remember what is r dot? r dot is nothing else but r dot is related to, is nothing else but it's just the velocity. It's just the velocity. It's just the velocity. Now, if the velocity vanishes, it means that a turning point in the motion has been, has been reached. The motion of the particle is therefore confined to the annular a region specified by the r maximum and the r minimum so is the motion is just between 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 there now from that equation we can compute the, the, the change in the, uh, the theta that results from one a complete transit going to r mean uh, from r mean to r max and back to r mean therefore that equation must just be multiplied by two because it's going up and then it's going down or it's going forward or it's going back so this is what you are going to have the path is closed only if change in theta is rational a fraction of 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 two pi right now let us also talk about the centrifugal uh, energy and the effective uh, potential now if in the preceding uh, expression of for for r and uh, change in theta and so forth a common term is the radical term which is this term there now in that case the last term in the radical can uh, has the dimension of energy of course because this is the energy and this is the energy therefore it must have the dimension of energy and according to l uh, according to this equation there that can also be written in terms of this this term can also be written in terms of that now we if we interpret the quantity as the potential energy you see we say this term is the you see the potential energy and we note it by subscript c to be uh, this equation 8.32 therefore the force the force associated with that potential because the force is always the negative gradient of the potential is just given by 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 this therefore the force is just given given by this because we differentiate that with respect to r now if we differentiate that with respect to r that those two will cancel and then we just have this now this quantity is traditional called the centrifugal force now the term that term that term can be interpreted as the centrifugal uh, potential energy of the particle and can be included with the 
potential energy as a function of r and in an effective potential energy defined by now we are actually defining the effective potential effective potential is the potential energy plus that that centrifugal uh, uh, that centrifugal potential energy now in that case for the case of the inverse square law central force motion is given by by this the central force uh, is just given by this now uh, from there, we know that UR, UR is nothing else but it's just given by the integral of force with respect to the argument dr with the argument r. Therefore, this is just going to be the potential. The potential in terms of the central force law, the potential there, we just want to substitute that with this because we know the force. And then if we know the force, we can be able to know the potential. Therefore, that must be plugged there in order for us to get the effective potential. Now, the effective potential function of the gravitational attraction is therefore given by this equation. It's therefore given by this uh, equation. Where this term, whereby this term is uh, nothing else but is the, 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 the uh, from the inverse uh, law, and this term is nothing else but is the, uh, from the effective potential. Now we can actually plot that. Now, if we plot that, if we plot that, that is the term uh, for the effective uh, potential, and that is the term from the the inverse square law. Now, if you combine that plus that, because the potential, the effective potential is a combination of the two, is just given by that. Where the potential is defined as zero at 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 infinity why that is the case that is the case because that is the case because remember the effective potential r is proportional to 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 the first term there uh, uh, where where you have u r where you have u r where you have u r is nothing else but is it's r and then the other term there it's 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 plus this effective one the effective one is proportional to r squared therefore if you have one divided by a very big number is just equal to zero it is even become zero it becomes worse it becomes very small uh, when this this is just uh, the square of 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 a very big number so that is what it is it is saying as i have i have actually explain so that's what you are going to have but now from this diagram uh, uh, the value of potential is a bit for taking to be uh, zero at the very huge uh, distances for example from here you can just see that the potential is just going to be zero when r is very big when r is a very big number so that's that's what you are going to have but we may identify through region of interest uh, through region of interest from that uh, uh, diagram of 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 the potential and then i'm going to define them in terms of the energy one the e1 and then the e2 and then the e3 now for e E1, which is a greater than zero, E1 is greater than zero, the particle motion is unbound. But now for E2, the particle is bonded uh, for, 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 for R2, to, the, the, the particle is only bonded uh, for in, in this region. The particle is, it cannot escape uh, R2 and, 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 and R4. All right, good. Now, the values R2 and R4 are, are the turning points. Of course, uh, this particle cannot escape uh, R4 and it cannot escape R, R2. The particle can be just going between this, this, this point. It cannot, it cannot escape. But for R1, the particle is unbound. It's free. It's free. It's free to move from, from, from wherever way the particle is, is, is coming from. Now, the E3, the motion has R is equal to R3 and it's a, a circular, a circular, a circular. Motion. E equals the minimum value of the effective uh, potential. E is equal to the effective menu, uh, the value of the uh, effective potential when R is equal to 3. Uh, R is, is, is 3. Now, the equation for the path of the particle under uh, the influence of a central force whose uh, magnitude, the, the magnitude is proportional to R, the inverse of uh, the, 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 the inverse of r squared between the particles and the force center can be obtained from that equation now from that equation we can just solve this integral as i've said i mean if you let one over r to be equal to you we can define the origin of theta so that the minimum value of r is equal to theta is equal to zero we find i mean if you do this and then you do some 
some some some some calculus or some maths then therefore we can define the angle to be given by the cosine of an angle to be given by this and now if we know the cosine of an angle therefore we can be able to define to determine what is what is a, a theta now let us define the, the the following constant if we define the following constant the alpha is just given by by this equation there this is is just alpha and then we define the epsilon to be given by this this is the epsilon therefore equation 8.9 uh, uh, 8.39 can be written in terms in terms of 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 this equation here right now this is the equation of a conic section with one focus at uh, the origin the quantity epsilon is what we call the eccentricity and two alpha is termed the let us uh, rectum of 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 the of the orbit right the minimum value of r in equation 8.41 in equation 8.41 occurs when theta is equals to zero now the maximum value of r equals when the the, the minimum value the minimum value of r equals when the the cosine of theta is maximum yes that is true because the relationship between the, the cosine of theta and r is inversely proportional to to each other please note 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 that now uh, the orbit of various uh, comic sections are, are shown together with the uh, the uh, eccentricities now for an example if 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 epsilon is equal to zero therefore you have a circle but now if the epsilon is uh, greater than zero but less than one you have an ellipse but now if epsilon is equal to one therefore you are just going to have a parabola which means the where you are just going to have a, par, a parabola and then when the epsilon is greater than one therefore you are just going to have the the hyperbola for an example take the case of of the a rotation of 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 the earth from the moon which is uh, if it is elliptic now in that case if the if it can be a parabola therefore which means the the earth will just escape the the the, the solar system and of course i just want you to look to watch this uh, youtube uh, video for for you to make sense of 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 this all in terms of the code uh, how do you get this uh circles or ellipse or parabola from cutting the cone at, at different at different positions now for a planetary motion the orbits are ellipse for an example with the major and the mina exists uh, defined by this equation uh, where these are defined by the major is just given by this equation and the the mina is just given by by that equation those the major exists depends only on the energy it de depends only on the on the on the energy while the the mina the mina also depends on the on the energy and l because we have l here but in there we just have the energy energy and the and the angular momentum term now the geometric of elliptic is shown in terms of the the parameters alpha epsilon a and and, and b where p where p and p p prime are the are the forces now the Absidal uh, distance r minimum and r maximum as uh, measured from the four c to the orbit are given by the following equation the r min is just given by this and then the r max is just given by by this equation yes so now to find the period of an elliptic motion we write the we take the time derivative of the 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 the, the, the area which is nothing else but is just given as a constant for for the real uh, velocities dt is just given by by this and then from this equation if you can rearrange this is what you are going going to have now from there you can just take the integral now if you take the integral because the entire area a of the ellipse is swept out in uh, one complete period now if you take the integral there therefore if you take the integration there you are just going to have a there so this will imply that if you integrate dt from zero to tau this is uh, what you are going to have t uh, the tau is just given by 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 this equation now the area of an ellipse is given by the area of an ellipse you know what is an area of ellipse is just given by pi a b and using a and b from the previous equations therefore the tau can just be given by by this by this by this equation there right now 
we also note uh, from that equation, the previous equation, that the semi-mina axis can be written in terms of this equation. Therefore, and uh, therefore from alpha is given by this, and the period can just be given by 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 this by this equation. Now, this results that the square of the period is the square of the period. The square of the period is proportional to the cube of a semi mea Proportional to the cube of semi mea of an elliptic orbit is known as the Kepler's third law. Or, uh, now, because the gravity, uh, the gravitational force is given by by this equation here. The gravitational force is given by this equation here. Sorry, that two. Oops, that two must be square. It can be given by by this. Now. The R square will just cancel each other. Therefore, K will just be given by that term. We can just see that K is just given by, by this, this term. The expression for the square of the periods therefore becomes, becomes this. So that is just what you are going to have. For M1 is much smaller than, smaller than, smaller than, smaller than M2. Now, Kepler's law can uh, now be summarized as, as follows. Planets move in elliptic orbits about the suns so with the suns at the uh, one focus. The area per unit time swept out by a radius vector from the sun to a planet is constant. For an example, this is the area because this is the sun at the center. This area is just, is just, is just, is just constant per unit time. The area there swept there, the blue region, is just the same as the area swept there. So there's, 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 there's no difference. All right, good, because in here, you might see that this triangle, the red shaded is long, but the motion there is more slower compared to here. Here, the motion is faster and there is it's, it's small. As, as a result, the, 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 the area per unit time is, is just, is just, is just a constant. The square of the planet's period is proportional to the cube of the major axis of the planet orbit. Right. Now, let us just do the following uh, example 8.4. Uh, Halley's uh, comments, which passes uh, around the suns in sun early in 1986, move in a heli in highly elliptical orbit with a century city of 0 0.96 and a period of 7 76 years. A calculate is a maximum and minimum distance from the sun. Now, equation 8.48 relates the period of the motion with the semi major because the, the mass is much, much, much smaller than the mass of the sun. Now, in that case, the A is just going to be given by, 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 by this. This is just going to be your, your A. Now, if you plug everything, this is what you are going to have as your as your a. Now, using that equation for for r, you are just going to have r to be given by the, the r mean to be given by that, then r, the r max to be given to be given by by this, right? So now in here you are just going to be changing the uh, what do you call you are just going to be changing the the seventy six years into 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 e into seconds. All right. Good. Now, let us also talk about the orbital uh, dynamics. The use of central force is uh, no way more useful, important, and interesting than in a space uh, dynamic. The Hohmann uh, transfer for a round trip between Earth and Mars represents a minimum energy, energy expenditure. Now, orbits are changed by a single or multiple thrust of a rocket, uh, of a rocket engine, two engine spans, are required for moving from uh, Earth to, to Mars. For an example, this is an orbit, this is an orbit from, 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 for, 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 from the Earth. Now, this is number one, the first band inject the spacecraft. The, 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 the first band will just be injecting the spacecraft from Earth orbit to elliptical transfer this is elliptical transfer of the orbit that intercept with the mass now the second band transfer the spacecraft from elliptical orbit into the into the into the into the mass into the mass orbit so as a result this is a rocket lifts at the at the earth and transfer orbits is a perihelion and now here this is a transfer 
orbit and then this is a transfer orbit operator consists with the uh, mass 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 orbit now we can calculate the velocity change uh, needed for Hohmann transfer by calculating the velocity of a spacecraft. Now for a circle and elliptic, uh, we have uh, from equation 8.42, this is the energy just given by that. Now for a circular path around the sun, this becomes, for a circular around the the sun, this, this, this uh, become this equation here. Now in that case, we have total energy given by this. Now if we solve the, the V, V1, because we know what is the total energy if you solve the v1 the total energy if you plug this here and then you solve v1 this is what you are going to have now the v1 is just going to be given by that and now we denote the semi major axis as a transfer ellipse by at is just given by r1 plus 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 r2 now if we calculate the energy of the perihelion for the transfer ellipse we we have the this energy is just given by 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 this equation there now this is just given by this equation there et now this is what you are going to have this is what you are going to have now where this uh, vt1 is a perillion transfer speed the direction of vt1 is along v1 is along v1 when i'm saying v1 i'm talking about this 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 velocity is in, in the direction of this uh, velocity where the vt2 will just be in in that uh, direction so that's what i wanted to you to see now in that case solving the equation now you have vt uh, is the parallel transfer speed uh, which is nothing else but is just given by by this this equation if you you solve for 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 the vt now the speed transfer change in v1 need is just change in v1 is just this speed vt1 minus v v1 therefore similarly for the transfer for the ellipse to the circular orbit of radius r2 we are just going to have this and then the vt2 is just going to be given by by that that equation there right now the total speed increment can be determined by adding the speed uh, change the speed change which is nothing else but the change in v1 plus the change in in, in v2 therefore the total time required to make the the, 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 the transfer which is nothing else but the, the, the t subscript t is the half period of the transfer orbit from equation 8.48 therefore that is just going to be the half period and that can just be given by by that equation now to make things make sense let us just uh, do the following example 8.5 calculate the time needed for a spacecraft to make a home and transfer from earth to mars and the Heliocentric transfer speed uh, required, assuming both planets are in coplanar orbits. Now we need to insert the appropriate constant in equation 8.85. Now from here we are just going to have this. Now if you plug the constant the g and then the mass of sun, this is what you are going to have for for that. But because k over m occurs so often in solar system calculation, we write it. As we just want to write this as an inverse like this so that is just going to be equal to that now from then the 80 we can therefore determine the 80 because the 80 is just given by this equation there now this is what you are going to have for for the 80 now because we know the 80 we can therefore be able to to determine the the the, the t subscript t which is nothing else but it's just going to be given as 259 Two five nine days. Now the heliocentric speed in need for the transfer is given in equation eight point five, and then the vt is just given by that. And now you just you just plug the equations, then you find thirty two point seven kilometers per hour for vt for vt one, and then we can also be able to find the the orbit speed of 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 the f. The orbit speed of the f is just given by by. By, by that equation 8.51 and then if you plug the veins this is what you are going to to have so good people i would like to to pause here for 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 this um lecture video and here are your tutorial uh, problems uh, goodbye